Hi, I'm Bob Knoten. On this episode of the Camp Chaos Chronicles, we're going to take our funky homemade apparatus here and actually do some tests with it. I think you're going to find this interesting. Dang it. Now, before we get started today, I'd like to talk a little business. Now, those of you that have been following us know that this is the third season that we've been doing this, and it's a lot of fun. It kind of appeals to whatever artistic side of me there might be, and uh, it has been generating some business for the shop, which is a good thing, and it was kind of the point. So, so that's all good things, but lately I've been learning more about the analytics side of this. Uh, previously I've been concentrating mainly on production and the work that I've got to do in the shop and that sort of thing. The analytics is really interesting and one of the things that I learned while going through that was that right now, of all the people that are watching this video, over 90% are not subscribers. And you know what? There's that mysterious thing called the YouTube algorithm that takes things like subscribers and likes and comments and throws them in a bag and shakes them up and dumps out a number that tells you how you're doing and uh, to a great extent determines your success as a YouTube channel. Well, that and your content, of course. So you'd really be helping us out if you would take the time to subscribe to this channel and maybe smash that like button down below there and maybe leave the comments that we know we can do to do what we do better so let's work together to make this a great youtube channel now on with the show the first operation that we will be performing with this apparatus is what's called back flushing now initially the injector would be oriented like this in the apparatus and the fluid would be flowing from top to bottom. What we're gonna do here is we're going to install it upside down and attach the wiring harness to it. And what I've done here is I've made up a second adapter. Fits on like this. It's got an extension here because the injector is sitting down further. The hose barb would be up here. And so uh, it fits on like this. You also notice that the pindle cap is removed. And the reason for that is that the pindle cap is tapered. And regardless of how you clamp it, it just slides right off when you put pressure to it. So this operation has to be done after you get the pindle caps off. You can see there's a little step in between here that'll aid clamping this on. And then we have a hose clamp on here to make that connection a little more secure and push that down and then attach it to the can and tighten the clamp then it's a matter of turning on the power just enough to get a good consistent buzz out of it i've got a graduated cylinder here that i'm going to place underneath and then I'm going to run about ten milliliters of fluid through it, and you can see there's not a whole lot of foreign material in there. If you look closely, you probably can't see it here, but there's some whitish material floating around, but I'm thinking that's probably from the fluid itself. That injector is back flushed. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna run through a test on one of these injectors to let you know how this thing kind of goes. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at this hose barb here, and that is clear. So we're gonna record that as a number one, no pits. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to mount the injector in the fixture, and we're gonna check 
the resistance in the winding should be between 2.9 and 3, according to all the other tests I've done. And we are at 3.0, 2.9. Okay, so we know that that's good. Record that. The next thing we're going to do is take a look at the pattern. And again, what we're looking for is a nice conical pattern. So we plumb up the, uh, the injector just down to the first barb. Remember, if we go all the way, it's going to be really hard to get it off because that's what a hose barb does. And we get this thing pulsing. And here we go. We got a nice, beautiful conical pattern. Shut it off. Dab its little chin. Get rid of any fluid. Because what we're going to do right now is we're going to test for leakage. Remember, there's over 100 psi in that can. So we're just going to pressurize it and look for any sort of leakage there for about 10 seconds or so. And I'm not seeing it. I'm calling that a pass. Then what we're going to do is do a flow rate check. We're going to run fluid for, through this for 20 seconds and note how much fluid passes through the injector. So get it going again. Got a timer on a cell phone here. And we push start. This one looks like it's flowing really well. I'm estimating about 34. There you go. There we go. So, what we got here is, ooh, I was close, 33 milliliters. And that is really pretty close to what we've been getting on these, except for that one outlier at 53. So, that's how we do this. Easy peasy. Well, let's take a look at the sheet that I recorded the information on. We've got set A, 1 through 12, B, 1 through 12, C, and D. Over here, you can see the criteria that I'm using to rate these different aspects. You've got ohms or resistance up here. That's going to be a number in ohms. And you can see throughout the entire list here in this column, it's either 29 or 30 ohms. The leakage test, that's either yes or no. It either leaks or it doesn't. For pattern, we've got one through five. One is a good cone, consistent, over a period of about five to ten seconds. Number two is a partial cone or a, an inconsistent cone. Uh, number three is a guard nose, sort of a, sort of a stream that is no, has no well-defined cone to it. Number four, sputter or low flow. That's a very low rate of flow and it's just kind of sputtering out of the end. And number five is inoperative with virtually no flow at all. The flow itself is going to be measured in milliliters over a 20 second run. And then the barb is number one is no pits. Number two is few pits on barb one. Number three is a few pits on both barbs. Number four is many pits on both barbs. So you can see this first set right here. <clears throat> I was a little discouraged about my how well my test was going to work. If you if you look at the ohms, that's not a problem. 29 or 30 ohms leaks. Uh, most of them are no. We got a couple of yeses in there. Pattern was kind of uh, you know one two four one four, kind of scattered. But the flow rate was was horrific. 30.5 is the high, and the low is five milliliters over 20 seconds. So I was thinking, okay, the, the numbers are going to be pretty meaningless. The rest of this could be used, but these numbers are going to be kind of junk. Well, then I got to the second set down here, B. We can see that, again, the ohms is consistent, 29 ohms. No leakers in this batch. 
all of them were, uh, in terms of pattern, number one, I'm not sure what happened down here. Number four, it's got a four for this one. I don't remember that happening and I don't have a flow. I'm gonna have to redo that one. But you can see these are fairly consistent and they decline uh, over time. Uh, this one right here is kind of an outlier, 55 milliliters in 20 seconds. When I got down to the end here, I went back just to kind of, you know, make sure that these were, this decline here over time was accurate. And we lost three milliliters over the run. And it takes about a can of fluid to do 12 injectors. Uh, you can see we got some asterisks here. Uh, you've got one asterisk, there was a second run. If there's two asterisks, there was a new can installed. So that happened right here. I thought maybe that was the case with this one, but then the next one was 27. So there's something up with, with uh, injector before. Now, if you look up here, you can see that this set, C, 29 all the way through, except for 30 ohms down here, no leaks, patterns are one, and these, you got a high of 53. Again, we got an outlier here. Uh, but the rest of these, uh, 37 down to 20, 28 was the low. So not bad. Uh, and this one right here is kind of the same thing, although the numbers were possibly a little more consistent, although you see a low of 20 here, 22, and then 36 at the top. So looking at this, I think we could probably, if we go throughout, well, this is junk. This whole set, this is the set that came on the engine that I'm rebuilding originally, which was in pretty awful shape. Obviously, it hadn't been maintained. But these, we can find 12 uh, that appear to be in roughly the same condition, somewhere in the middle of the range, around 27 to 30. And what I'll do then is I'll take those 12 and get a fresh can and um, do it again to make sure that uh, we're consistent. So I think this is... I think this is a reasonably good apparatus to use for this purpose. Well, generally, I'm pretty pleased with what uh, information we've been able to get from this crude little setup of ours. Um, I'll probably use it again, but I think the weak link, I think it's clear to all of us, is this thing right here. And what happens, of course, is as the, as the uh, fluid gets used, the pressure in the can goes down and the readings, the flow readings go down. As well, but in terms of being able to get an idea of what the uh, pattern is and whether it's going to leak and those other tests, perfectly valid. I think what I'm going to experiment is with a pressure vessel of some kind. I've got this coolant recovery tank, which is built heavier than any coolant recovery tank that I've ever seen. That uh, uh, I put a pressure valve in the top and see if uh, see if it'll take 100 psi from a distance. Now in terms of how much fluid we used, we can see we've got these six empty cans right here and there's a partial can on the stand. So I don't know, I forget exactly. I think these probably about four and a half dollars per can. So let's call it nine, 18, 27 dollars. But these containers here are filled with the fluid and this stuff is great for cleaning small parts. So I would call this success. So if you like these videos, like, subscribe, follow us on Facebook, and we'll see you the next time on the Camp Chaos Chronicles.